Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to my garden. A number of you have been requesting to see my backyard vegetable garden, and that's what I'm here to show you today. You will see some wins, some losses. I do not claim to be the ultimate gardener <laughs> by any means, but I learn something new every single year, but I come back to it every single year because I love it. It's like therapy for me out here in the garden, working with my plants, and it's a great learning experience so anyways I think first we'll give the tour I'll show you all around maybe give you some tips and tricks of things that I found in growing certain vegetables and then I was thinking maybe afterward I would just sit down and give you like the actual dimensions of our boxes practical things like that if you're looking to create something similar and also maybe go through a little bit of like the pros and cons of raised garden beds versus the in-ground garden, which is what I had the first number of years of gardening. So without further ado, let's get right into it. To my left here, we have our green beans. You'll see some of these yellow leaves. I'm not sure actually what that's from, but they have just started bearing beautifully. We have a lot of beautiful green beans coming in right now so that's super exciting i was a little bit unsure on how these would turn out this year we let the chickens free range in the garden at the beginning of the season and it was right after i planted these green beans and they kept digging them up so it's not actually perfectly spaced in here but it filled out fine on the end of the garden bed here i have a patch of zinnias i love incorporating flowers throughout my garden beds just to add color the pollinators bees butterflies really really love them so i don't have them all in one section because i love the pops of colors in varying places so that when you look overall it's a very pleasing picture next is our cabbage box this is a new one for me this year i mean i've grown cabbage before but an entire bed like this maybe seems a little bit overkill but i really want to make a bunch of sauerkraut so that's what i had in mind in here sauerkraut coleslaws are delicious in the summer so i did an entire garden bed here uh, and these are actually ones that i started from seed which is always extra rewarding so we have some purple cabbages and then green cabbage and i just alternated that when i plant the garden i love to try to make things look as aesthetically pleasing as i can just for fun <laughs> it's kind of like doing art cabbages are also just so pretty to look at all the frilly details and stuff they do have a little bit of bugs on the leaves i am pretty picky with what i will spray in my garden and so if it's not something that's actually harming my actual vegetable i won't always go after it just like there's some green bean leaves here that have some holes in them the green beans are just fine so i'm not going to bother spraying pesticides or anything like that on them but we do have something that is really killing my plants that we'll talk about in a bit you see the chicken coop back here this is where the chickens are situated and then to my left here we have the dahlia patch this dahlia patch has honestly been so much fun for us if you are new here uh, we sell dahlias to wedding florists uh, just kind of as a side hobby side income and has been really fun for all of us josh loves the health side of plants so he enjoys looking up how we can get them to have stronger roots better looking plants and all of that and then of course i love to cut the flowers arrange the flowers that kind of thing and the Kids also love coming out helping me pick buckets of flowers in the morning so maybe I can insert a little clip of what this looked like last year in full bloom but it's definitely a highlight for us and dahlias here will bloom well it depends when you plant them this year we're really late in planting generally we'll start getting blooms sometime in July which I'm filming this on July Third. so obviously the entire garden will be transformed till the end of the month generally they'll bloom from July till beginning of November so they have a really good blooming season dahlias are work horses and 
just do really, really well. Anyway, I'm really excited to get back into that again this year. We have less varieties this year, but have kind of learned what um, colors the wedding florists normally shoot for and kind of what's trendy that year and all of that we have to pay attention to. We have more plants than we've ever had before. I think we planted 300 and some, but less colors. So anyway, that'll be fun. And then moving back into the vegetable garden here. This is my first time growing broccoli, believe it or not. And we are all having so much fun watching these, I think. It's probably time to be cutting them. We have these beautiful heads now, and that's just kind of been a fun experiment and so easy to grow. Also, I had no idea that broccoli was so easy. Behind the broccoli here, we have some more um, lemon basil. Goodness, I wish I could actually let you smell this. This lemon basil smells so delicious and turns usually almost into like a shrub-like plant. So beautiful. And right behind that, we also have some more zinnias. All right, next over, we have our tomato plants. Now, tomato plants and I have had a history. <laughs> I have had to learn a lot in growing tomatoes. They would always get a blight. Maybe like mid-season, they would come up looking very promising and then end up going out very poorly. And I was not getting all the tomatoes I wanted. It was kind of they would die when a lot of green tomatoes were on them so what we have learned over the years is to supplement them with calcium this can be done different ways I will try to put the actual name on the screen here uh, again Josh is the guy but behind all the health of the plants but we feed them with tomato tone I think it's once a week and that has really made a big difference. That and then pruning the bottoms of the plant. So I will pick off all the leaves, the bottom maybe this far. Wow, here comes the sun. So um, anyways, then pruning off the bottom, what is this, like six inches of the plant has made such a difference because it allows airflow to the plant and the roots just kind of keeping all that fungus and stuff away. So those have been game changers. These are just wooden, not wooden, metal rods that we spray painted black just to make a nice uniform look. And then we use these little tomato clips. Maybe I can take one off to show you. These little tomato clips we just got at a local like greenhouse supply place and they're amazing. You can get them in a giant bag, very inexpensive. You put them around the vine and you just literally clip it. And it has just been such an easy way to stake the tomatoes as well as the dahlias and things like that. Okay, time to eat some humble pie. <laughs> oh, you guys, my cucumbers. So Josh put up this little arch for me a, a number of years ago. I think our cucumbers did fine the first year, but since then I have struggled with cucumbers. They come up looking beautifully. You see the plants here. This side is still looking pretty nice. This side starting to get the same old wilt that I've had over and over. They just get full of cucumber buds. We start getting just a couple of cucumbers and the plants wilt, start on one end, keep wilting and die, which has been very frustrating. I mean, I been itching to can pickles but after doing some research i think i may know what the problem is and i've been sprinkling them with diatomaceous earth which you see that white powdery stuff that's what that is which is supposed to help for cucumber beetles and it does seem to but apparently what's going on here it's a long name some sort of a bacteria I think that the cucumber beetles I guess have in their system and so it'll be in the beetles over winter and then in the summer when the beetles come back out they will transfer it back onto the cucumber plant and start the same process over so basically if there's been any cucumber beetles on my cucumbers then they are passing that back on the plant as soon as it starts on the plant it's just a matter of time apparently there is no cure for it the only way to get rid of it is to rotate the crop so normally i will do that i'll rotate my what i have in which boxes <laughs> but it's because of the arch here that I've been doing the cucumbers in the same exact place year after year. So it's good to know. I wish I had known 
before I planted them this year. I'll have to see if I can still get any cucumber plants um, at a greenhouse or things like that. I know the greenhouse ne near to us is sold out of so many things, but that's what my plan for next year is to switch locations for the cucumbers and see if we can get back to thriving cucumber plants. If you have any cucumber tips, please let me know. I would love to have a bumper crop of cucumbers again. Next to them, you see the melon box. You'll also see that same powdery white stuff on them. I also sprinkled the diatomaceous earth on them. I haven't seen any wilting on there, so I don't know if they're not prone to that or what. But we have two varieties of melons in here. We have the Sarah's Choice watermelon, and I get my seeds from Johnny Selected Seeds, by the way. <laughs> Sarah's Choice, and then what's the other one? Sugar Cube, I think. It's a tiny, tiny little, very sweet, like personal sized melon that we also had last year. It was delicious, so I just planted the leftover seeds this year and did them again. Oh goodness, I just saw we have a little melon coming, a tiny baby one, that's so exciting. I was looking the other day and I wasn't sure if there were any little baby ones, but they are in fact coming. But next to the melons here, we have a box of onions. We plant quite a bit of onions, as you can tell. I love onions in cooking, but also we cure them and then save them for winter time. I mulch most of my garden boxes, or I say mulch. <laughs> it's actually a mushroom soil, but it really is beneficial for the soil health. So I like to do that, but I did not mulch the onions because I wanted them to have more airflow so that they don't rot as easy. My mom was also telling me that I think as they get kind of bigger you kind of push away the dirt out of the onions just to um, expose them even more <laughs> to the elements and it helps them to um, cure better. So anyway little tip there next to the onions we have just a few more tomato plants and then in these planters you can see one of them here died in the other planter I just put some creeping I think it's creeping time it overwinters year after year uh, I might do something else there especially considering that the one died now these planters are so shallow that it's hard to keep them watered uh, but let me show you what it looks like okay I'm gonna talk from you to you from up here. So we have one of the potato boxes. We actually have two boxes here and growing them has been so much fun for me. Again, diatomaceous earth works amazing on potato bugs. You'll see they're a little bit blown off to the side right now. They were giant and we had a big windstorm and just kind of blew them. But it's almost time for them to start drying up now anyway. We weren't sure how it would work to plant potatoes in garden boxes since you usually mound them up. What we found works really well is actually just filling the garden box halfway with dirt and granted our garden boxes do not have bottoms so this is where our in-ground garden used to be. So the bottoms of our boxes still go right down into the soil so they have a lot of roots that they can grow down there. We just fill the boxes halfway with dirt, plant our tomatoes and then when we would usually be mounding them up we just go ahead and dump more dirt or mulch on the top and kind of mounds them up that way and it's actually worked really really well for us over the past number of years now and this year was my first year doing diatomaceous earth as a potato bug like repellent control whatever you want to call it and it has worked really well so I'm excited about that I love how I'm just literally hauling around green beans through my entire video. Next to those we have three little garden boxes here and this has been a fun one for me and the kids, the oldest three. They each get to plant their own little garden boxes, take care of it through the season, harvest the vegetables from it. You'll see Kyra's beautiful sunflower over here. She went ahead and planted that as well as I think she has some broccoli, some celosia, peppers. Hudson usually loves to do corn. This year he has a beautiful tomato plant that we need to actually stake up. He has a bunch of 
cabbage, different things like that. And then Leslie has her cabbage zinnias, and then of course her little pinwheel, which is really fun. Behind that, which is nothing to see, it's honestly a weed patch right now. This was our strawberry patch, and we got a few of them this year, but it's the third, fourth year, so it's time to plant new. And I actually wanna plant them in a garden box next time. We're hoping to add a couple more garden boxes for next year as our family grows. Now that the kids are getting older, we're eating more for one. And also we've done the raised beds for long enough now that we know we love it. So we wanna make a couple more for the strawberries. And I'm excited for that because strawberries just tend to go everywhere and having them in a box to keep them more contained. Behind that, we have a row of raspberries right here. These go crazy. They bear fruit beautifully twice a year. We don't ever spray them. Honestly, the only thing I do for them is prune them hard <laughs> in the spring and then um, let them go. I don't water them, I don't fertilize them. Uh, and so whenever we pull out the strawberries here, I actually wanna make a second row of raspberries so that we hopefully can start freezing more and stuff because right now they're just getting gobbled up. <laughs> this is probably confusing, but I'm looping you around. So these are the kids' garden boxes here. We have another potato box here. So we have two full boxes of potatoes and then moving along to our herb box. I'll have to include some B-roll of the actual herbs because they're hiding behind the onions. We have some more onions here and then I have a bunch of herbs here on the other end. We have oregano, chives, thyme, parsley, I don't know, a whole bunch of things. Again, we have a little, and I see Japanese beetles. They will have to go. I'll need to set up my traps. Another just little planter of zinnias here. These are totally not the color that the bag said that they would be, but who cares? They add a nice, fun little happy pop, and so they can stay. We do have irrigation in our boxes, and that also goes into this planter, so I really don't have to do any sort of care as far as looking after it, other than just coming and cutting flowers. This little basil plant came back from seed, I guess, from last year, and I just couldn't let it go, so we have one randomly growing in our walkways. And I have a couple more herbs right here, a couple more basil, we have cilantro, and I think my dill did not make it. I tried transferring one because it was also, I don't know if you can see the one back there, there's also one growing from seed from last year, and I tried transplanting it, but I guess since I had to pull it through the landscape fabric, it kind of lost all its roots, so I don't know, maybe it'll be next year till that one comes up. Behind that, we have a bunch of peppers. I love planting little lunchbox peppers. They are so tasty for snacks or just with meals. And then we also have some hot peppers for salsa, stuffed jalapenos, that kind of thing. And I think I also popped in a couple of bell peppers, which we love for like stuffed peppers and that kind of thing. So that's the pepper box. And then lastly is my box of leafy greens and I need to pull some weeds I see. This box I planted way too tight. You live and you learn. I don't know what I was thinking when I planted this but it is way too tight in. I pulled what was here? Spinach. I think my spinach was infested so I pulled that to get, hopefully give these lettuces some more space but they're crammed in way too tight. I have some carrots then as well as red beets on the end. The red beets also have just not done well this year, not like even right from the beginning. And it's right when I had the chickens out and they were scratching in there. I don't know if they did something, but now like the leaves look awful. So anyway, I know red beets aren't hard to grow. We've done them multiple times, but I'm not sure what their problem is this year. So I might just replant some. So you'll see back here are my two rose bushes. These are David Austin roses. We actually got an arch for them just to, we need to spray paint it yet. And then need to set that up. These are actually climbing roses. So there should be an arch here going over the loop and then also hedging the garden in the front. We had lavender last year. Our soil was too rich for lavender. So we actually have lavender in a different place now and I planted more dahlias here. So in a month or two, we should have a beautiful 
dahlia hedge kind of casing in the garden, which I can't wait for, but that's what's bordering along the outside. Okay, you might be wondering, girl, where's your sweet corn? Well, it's right here, but it's just on the edge of Josh's field corn, so we actually plant a fairly large patch of sweet corn, and you honestly, unless you're a farmer, probably can't tell the difference between where that ends and where Josh's field corn begins so that has worked well for us he just actually uses his corn planter plants a few rows and that works out well we also have down this way beside the sweet corn patch is where we're growing a bunch of watermelon also started these from seed and just like to give them a nice big area to vine all around and grow and that's not like tangling into all my other garden plants so they also get kind of their own little plant. I just thought it might be helpful if you are looking to do something similar to talk a little bit about the actual dimensions of our garden boxes and some things like that so all of our boxes are four foot wide which is is the perfect width. <laughs> One thing you really want to keep in mind is you don't want to make them wider than what you can reach. So for like weeding, picking things, you don't want to have to crawl into the box to get there. And so four foot wide makes it so that you can reach half ways from either side. And then they're deferring lengths. So we have some that are four foot square, some are four by eight, some are four by 12. And then we just kind of drew up a design of the pattern that we wanted to use and it's turned out really well. I love having some different sizes of boxes, but the biggest key would be just to make sure they're not <laughs> wider than four feet. All of our boxes have irrigation, and Garden Answer has a great tutorial that we followed, and according to Josh, it was pretty easy to do and is a, definitely a key, because one thing with raised beds is they do dry out a lot faster than in ground. The stones that we have between the boxes, so we put down landscape fabric first, secured that with staples, and then covered it with, it's a type of river rock. I'm trying to think if there's any other details. I think that basically covers it. As far as like pros and cons of raised garden beds, honestly, I was a little bit scared to do it the first year. This will be our third or fourth year now. I was a little bit scared when we started that what if this is just like a trendy thing and in a year I will regret it and wish we'd never done it and here we spent all this money on making these boxes, all this time on making these boxes and then what if we hate it and I was a little bit nervous about that but good news, I actually love it. I honestly don't think there's anything that I liked better about in-ground gardening versus raised bed gardening. A few of my highlights or favorite things about the raised beds is for one, you can pack things in tighter so you don't need the width between the rows that you technically would have in-ground, which makes weeding so much less, which is of course a big plus. I love that things like melons, watermelons, um, all these like viney plants <laughs> do not just go crazy. They are contained. Now they will spill over the sides, but from my experience, they don't continue to grow once they're down there. And it's kind of beautiful when they're spilling over like that. It's easier to control your soil health when you have them in boxes like this. Now I mentioned during the tour that our boxes don't have bottoms, so the roots can still go deep down. Maybe this fall I can show you. I, I might have shown you last year too, I'm not sure. In the winter we plant cover crop, and so we plant these radishes, the roots go down to six feet down, so they'll bring like the nutrients back up. It's really cool if you study. How that works but it's also easier to have like your perfect soil mixture I know Josh paid a lot of attention to that when we first filled our boxes so anyways those are a few of the top things that come to mind of things that we have loved with raised bed gardening and honestly it's just it's so much fun such a fun creative outlet for me and if you're a fellow gardener let me know in the comments below I would love to hear what you're growing this year what you're specifically enjoying this year maybe tips and tricks that you have found this season and let's just learn from each other but I think that wraps up our July garden tours. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for being here and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye friends. Golden, golden thing.